In this episode, we start at the stomach, the site of digestion. The stomach is filled with gastric acid, with hydrochloric acid being one of its components. Hydrochloric acid has a low pH and assists in breaking down food, which will be further digested down the digestive tract. The low pH is also effective in preventing the growth of bacteria, as few bacteria can survive in such an extreme environment. Bacteria that do survive the acidic environment would subsequently encounter a sticky mucus layer, which also serves as a protective layer preventing the digestion of the stomach lining by gastric acid. So relax and enjoy the moment. Except that it's not going to happen. The stomach encounters damage to its lining, creating a bypass for pathogens to enter. Most pathogens which cause infections in the gastrointestinal tract are foodborne and caused by consuming food and water contaminated by pathogens or the toxins they produce. In this case, it's Vibrio, which is commonly found in seafood. Vibrio is a gram-negative, comma-shaped bacteria. It has a flagellum, a tail-like extension which allows it to move about by swimming. Your immune system is once again required. This time, we are introduced to three more immune cells. Starting with the mast cells, which are activated by damage-associated molecular patterns, DEMS. Molecules which are released from tissue damage, be it from infection or an injury. They release the granules, which contain histamine, resulting in vasodilation, the widening of the blood vessels, increasing blood flow and allowing for easy movement of immune cells. Other than neutrophils and macrophages as the first responders, there are also eosinophils and basophils. Acinophils are easily identified with their pink coloration, which results from picking up eosin dyes from Romanowski staining, and bilobed nuclei shown on the pattern of the character's cap and her pigtails. Basophils have a blue coloration as a result of picking up basic dyes, and their functions are not well known, which explains the character's cryptic nature. You would also vomit to remove any pathogens or toxins present in the food. The immune cells eventually succeed in clearing the vibrial pathogens, until another threat emerges. Anisakis, which is also commonly found in seafood. The person had eaten raw fish contaminated with both vibrio and anisakis. This is an example of a cold infection, where more than one strain of pathogen was introduced at the same time, with each pathogen attacking the body in its respective means. In this case, Anisakis cause the damage to the stomach lining, compromising the tissue integrity, allowing the vibrio to enter with ease. Anisakis is a parasite, a group of pathogens which are multicellular. Unlike bacteria, parasites are larger than immune cells, so phagocytosis is out of the question. Instead, eosinophils target parasites with their receptors and release their granules into the parasite. These granules contain major basic protein a toxin effective against helminth parasites, the worm-like subclass of parasites which Anisakis belongs to, effectively killing them and averting the threat once more. 